The first part of our detailed study is going to hit us three exam questions in one small piece. If you learn it this way, it's going to be very straightforward. It's a thing that can be very complicated, and you can literally spend your entire life studying this, or you could study what you need to put down on a piece of paper in June. So that's what we're going to do here. So first thing we're going to talk about is these, these things called energy carriers. Now, an energy carrier, literally something that carries energy. One of them is going to carry energy for like movement and growth, and one of them is going to carry protons and electrons. Okay? Now, this can be asked as a question in photosynthesis, in respiration, or as a question by itself. So some books would have this as a full chapter by itself. No need. Exactly what's on page 12 is all we need to know. We have two energy carriers that we're going to talk about here. We have ATP and we have NADPH. Now, some of you guys probably don't like the look of this already, but what I would say to you is it's P when it's photosynthesis. P for photosynthesis. In respiration, no P, but everything else is the exact same. These are what's known as high energy carriers. So they actually are full. If you think of them like a bus and the people on the bus being the energy, they are a full bus. The bus is gonna drive into town, let's say, drop off all the people. They are low energy carriers then. Okay, ATP, which, also, which, which actually stands for adenosine triphosphate, that is the high energy molecule. The low energy molecule is a DP, which is adenosine diphosphate. Tri means three, di means two. If I explain this, it's, it's there on your page for you, but in a bit of a crude enough diagram just up here, if this is an adenine, adenosine molecule, this is a phosphate and a phosphate, that's ADP, that's low energy, it's like a dead battery, has no charge, nothing, no use to us. What that can do is that can trap energy, and we put it like this here, trap energy from cellular respiration or from food or something like that with another phosphate molecule, and now it's, a, now it's called ATP. So we did have ADP, now we have ATP. And you have lots of that in your body now, so if you decide to walk, think, move, do anything, your, what your body does is it breaks that bond there, breaks that bond, releases energy, and it goes back here to just be, that breaks off, breaks that bond, the energy is released, and we're back to ADP. So high energy, low energy. And that can, that can go both ways, as we just shown there, and you can see from your diagram. So it goes both ways. And literally what that carries is we call it energy. Okay. The NADPH, well, what that is carrying is the protons and electrons from before. So the protons and electrons from before. They're going to be used later on when we talk a little bit more detail about photosynthesis. But you can see the, you can see the diagram down there. We've got NADP plus to NADPH. Or if you want, this is the high energy molecule. The low energy molecule is NADP plus. Now don't get worried or bogged down about balancing equations or electrons and protons. I'll show you exactly how to do it now. But they won't ask you about this. They won't ask you about how it works. If you want to go from low to high, if you think about it here, there's one proton and two electrons to get you from low to high. One proton two electrons. So H plus and two electrons. Okay, so two electrons. Just think of this for simple maths. If you add another plus onto a plus, let's just say it's plus two now, grand. Now that H sticks on the end there, but it's plus two. And then two negatives, two electrons that are negative, take away those two pluses, and that's why we're left with that. So another plus gives us another plus there. And the two electrons, you don't put the E into the actual name itself. The two electrons, the negative part, cancel out the two pluses, and we have this. Do you need to know that? Nah, no. And that's it. That's it. Now, they have once asked you what NAD stands for. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. In the review, and all reviews of Leibniz or Papers, by the way, are online, that was considered a tough question. But they're not going to ask that again. That's just there to catch people out. If you were saying to yourself, 
David, I need guaranteed, without a doubt, 101% in my leaving cert. Well, then I'd spend a bit of time to learn that. Otherwise, I'd, I'd leave it out. I would know and understand those energy carriers. We have two of them, and those two of them are going to be the same for all the chapters and all the different ways we speak about them, except P for photosynthesis. If it's not photosynthesis, you just get rid of the P. Grant. Okay. And now we're into our final idea here in terms of photosynthesis, our light stage and our dark stage. So light stage and dark stage. So the detailed study of it here, which we are only going to look at if the examiner specifically asks. So light stage and dark stage. Few things to note. The light stage needs light. Why? Well, photolysis, that's why. The dark stage doesn't need dark. It's often called the light independent stage. Okay, so the light dependent or light stage, dark stage or light independent stage. It just doesn't need light. In terms of the light stage, I've, I've broken it down into three steps here. Three really easy, straightforward steps. Step one, light is absorbed. So light is absorbed. Grand. Now, when light is absorbed, we talk about chlorophyll inside the chloroplast and photolysis again. So I'm not going to I'm not going to explain that again. It's the exact same stuff as over there. Chlorophyll is inside the chloroplast. It fills the chloroplast. It absorbs the light. It's the green pigment. It's actually the thing that makes plants green. And then photolysis, which is the splitting of water. So that's already on the board there. Lysis split, splitting of water. Grand. Now we're into the part here. Now we, the, the part here that a lot of people don't like. The pathways. Now think about this. If this is our last piece of study here, and this is one part of one chapter you don't like, you can still like do the rest of it. And you could definitely guess a couple of things with these pathways. And we're going to do a few exam questions at the end of this and point out to you how it's very straightforward and, and easy for us to do well in this. But just think about it, it's not that big a deal, especially in the grand scheme of things where we looked at the different sections on the exam. There are two pathways, literally pathway one and pathway two. Pathway one is what's known as the cyclic. Okay, now actually calling it cyclic is considered a key point, cyclic. It goes round in a cycle. We see a good few cycles on our leaving cert course. We see a few of them, you know, in ecology, you see the nitrogen cycle, the carbon cycle. You know, we see, I suppose we see the menstrual cycle as well. We see tons of cycles, things literally going around in a circle and being reused. Okay, this first one is cyclic here. Now, let me just give you a few key points. It says electrons absorb the light energy. Electrons absorb light energy. How? Don't know. Ele electrons absorb the light energy. Grant. So there we have here. There's the electron. It just got energized. So there, look, there's the... I'm just going to draw it as a little picture here for you. High energy electrons transferred along electron acceptors and back to the chlorophyll. So these electrons are in the chlorophyll. They go around the electron acceptors. And they go back to the chlorophyll. Okay. So that's fair enough. Now, what do you mean to go around electron acceptors? Think about this. Think about, say, if you were in your living room now and you had all these couches and chairs going around and you started to jump around these different chairs. You started in one chair, you started jumping around all over the place for around 10 minutes. What would happen? Well, you'd, you'd be fairly hot and sweaty, wouldn't you? You'd be losing energy. As these electrons bounce around different electron acceptors, they also lose energy. That energy is trapped by this ADP up here, the same thing we spoke about before, and a phosphate, and it becomes ATP. It becomes ATP, which is literally our high energy carrier that gives things energy to move, to do anything. So this is trapped by ADP and forms ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Grant, that's three points we're gonna use for that. You can get into your, your cyclic phosphorylation and all that sort of stuff if you want to. Absolutely unnecessary. You could, again, study this for the rest of your life if you want to. Absolutely unnecessary for our goal here. Okay, the second pathway is, well, one is cyclic. 
is pathway two, which is non-cyclic. And again, that's another point. Now I'm gonna tell you that this is the exact same. This is the exact same, except for it's non-cyclic. And what do I mean by that? I mean the e e electrons get energy, grand, so they get energized, fair play to them. They bounce around from electron acceptor to electron acceptor, grand, that's not a problem. As they do that, well, let's think of you bouncing around your couch at home. As they do that, they lose energy. That energy is trapped by ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and forms what? Again, ATP. Now, the only difference that we're gonna speak about here is that they're non-cyclic, so it doesn't return to the chlorophyll like we had here. What actually happens is the electrons here bind with the protons from photolysis and NADP plus, and they form NADPH. So does that make sense? Instead of going back, these electrons bind, uh, bind up with NADP plus and the protons from earlier of photolysis and give us NADPH. Okay, so N, we'll write that in, N-A-D-P-H. And just in case you're, you're wondering there, do you have to draw these diagrams? No, some people I know are visual learners, some people are auditory learners, some people are kinesthetic learners. Most, everyone's really a mixture of all three. Some people like diagrams, some people hate them. That's why I've put those diagrams in there to help explain what's going on here. You can see it's basically the exact same, it's the exact same diagram that I've drawn here on the board. Now, just so you're aware, we have this electron here and we have the proton here and that binds up with the NADP plus from there. So I'll just write that in here, NADP plus. Grant. Now, the last part here, and this is quite crucial because they might ask you a little bit about these products and I'm gonna put it up here, is the products of the light stage. There's three, literally three products. We've got the ATP, which is gonna give energy, so ATP. We've got NADPH, NADPH, which is gonna give protons and electrons combined with carbon dioxide to form glucose. And we've got oxygen is the other one. Where did oxygen come from? Remember from the photolysis? And we know that oxygen has two fates, out into the atmosphere and respiration. Cool. So I like to draw just a little uh, dotted line and separate those because these top two are gonna move on to the dark stage, whereas oxygen, that's where it goes there. Grant, now that's the light stage and that's what you need to know to answer any leaving sir question ever. Any leaving sir question ever. So let's just keep it like that. If you wanted to add a few more details or you learned it slightly differently, that's fine, but construct your study this way towards the exam paper. Not to write an essay on photosynthesis, not to do a speech, not to have a debate about it, to actually answer exam questions. Cool, the last idea here is the dark stage. Now, again, the other name for the alternate name for the dark stage is the light independent stage, grand. Now, because it's not controlled by light, it's controlled by something, which is a massive chapter you'll see if you go back a couple of pages, it's controlled by enzymes. Okay, so why is that important? Not massively important now, but we're gonna speak about almost every single class, how enzymes, even though they're a full chapter, they speed up a reaction without getting used up in a reaction. Remember the famous one from junior cert would be the amylase in your saliva. But what we're gonna speak about in terms of biology here is that enzymes are affected by pH and temperature. So pH and temperature can affect the growth of a plant because they affect enzymes in a plant. Same way the enzymes inside of you are affected by pH and temperature. You know your body is 37 degrees and that's where most of your enzymes work best, except for if you're a boy and you have testicles and they're outside and that's a, usually a degree lower. Except if you wear tight boxers and you heat up your testicles over a period of time and that can cause some infertility. Um, but listen, your enzymes for pH, well, most of the time it's at a pH of around seven. We'll learn about pepsin in your stomach, that's a pH of two. But that's a different chapter for a different day. All I want you to know is enzymes, pH and temperature. And we have four points here, four points. Point one, 
Point one, CO2 diffuses into the stroma. Okay, I'm gonna write CO2 absorbed simply because we haven't spoken about diffusion or stroma or you, you say stomata, you just write that in if you, if you know that name, fine. So CO2 is absorbed. Now, what does diffusion mean? That's a, a different chapter, but it's the moving of a gas from high concentration to low concentration. Basically, it just absorbs in holes at the bottom of the leaf. That's fine. Step two, it says CO2 is reduced. Now, again, I'm not a chemistry teacher. I don't, I, why did I put reduction in there? I don't even know what that means, which is fine. CO2 turns into C6H12O6 using the products of NADPH and the energy supplied by ATP. Okay, so you see the way it says prod cuts there? I purposely didn't change that. And I know you're gonna say, oh no, you made a mistake. I can literally change it now because we haven't given you or saying yeah, the notes yet. I'm not gonna change it because it reminds me every year to give it this point here. As you'll see in a few minutes, when we go through exam questions, I'm gonna be talking about key points. Sometimes students get a little bit worried and they think, well, if I'm not good at spelling, well, will I get the marks? Yeah, spelling doesn't count. Spelling doesn't matter. It's not an English exam. My English is absolutely appalling. However, I did get a hate, I did get an A1 in English, but that was because I used a strategy like this, even though I got terrible in my mocks. And so anyway, that doesn't matter, different day. So we've got products of NADPH and energy supplied by ATP. So CO2 turns into glucose using the products of NADPH. What are they again? The electrons and the protons and the energy supplied by ATP. So CO2 plus the protons plus the electrons gives us glucose, C6H12O6. Okay, what actually allows them to bind together? The energy from the ATP. Okay, now I've got a little bit of a line, a little bit of a dot underneath here, which separates out a few issues, a few things, they're not issues. Two more things. Once this high energy molecule, once both of them, sorry, both high energy molecules are used up, they just return to low energy molecules. Okay, so once they take this stuff from the light stage to the dark stage, they drop off, they drop off their passengers, they're empty buses now. They return back here into the light stage to just go again. So that's what this says, three and four. NADPH returns to NADP plus and ATP returns to ADP and a phosphate, or just ADP if you want. So I'm just gonna write up here, we've got N, what is, we've got NADP, and we've got ADP, and they actually just return back into the light stage. There, it's the worst arrow I've ever drawn in my entire life, so fine. That's it, that's photosynthesis, that stuff there. And you could probably cut it down even more. You could probably make it a little bit simpler on yourself. Let's give it a little bit of a recap. Let's see what's going on here. Photosynthesis, really, really big chapter. Worth, if we include the experiment, potentially up to 15% of your entire grade. Okay, and this is all we need to know. These are the different headings for exam questions. We've got to know, well, what it is first. It's the production of food using light and inorganic materials. We need to know the role of it. Three things, plant food, animal food, oxygen for respiration. For, for us, grand. We need to know this up here. So this could be worth six marks if it comes up. So two key points for each of that. So that's the equation. Any of you guys who have done respiration will realize it's just the other way around. We have in respiration, glucose and oxygen gives us, remember, breathing out carbon dioxide, water, and then energy. We've got a general overview question to tackle those ideas. Cool. In that general overview, we spoke a little bit about photolysis which is there, so we got that photolysis there. Probably should have left a bit more of a, a gap in between it. So the splitting of water. We then spoke about energy carriers. What's the story with the energy carriers? Well, there's only two of them, and we could use this in many other chapters as well, so it was nice to dip into them here. ATP and NADPH, high energy carriers to low. And then we got into a more detailed study here. We had the light stage with three steps. Light is absorbed. We had the two pathways, and hopefully you're not scared of the two pathways now, cyclic and non-cyclic. Electrons absorb, or absorb energy from light, bounce around these electron acceptors, lose energy, 
which is trapped by the ADP to form ATP. And then in the non-cyclic, we also produce this NADPH because it doesn't return to the chlorophyll. It is non-cyclic. And when it doesn't return to the chlorophyll, what actually happens is those electrons bind with the protons and the NADP plus to form this. And those two products here are going to go into the dark stage, whereas oxygen, well, we know it's got two fates. So if I try draw Grant, in the dark stage, this is also known as the light independent stage. It's controlled by enzymes, which is important because they're affected by pH and temperature. We need to know, well, realistically, two things and some add-ons if you want. CO2 is absorbed, grant. If you wanted to talk about diffusion, if you wanted to talk about somata, grant. And then that CO2 plus protons plus electrons, which came again from the NADPH, bind together using the energy from the ATP to form C6H12O6, glucose, which is the whole purpose of photosynthesis. And then what happens is those high energy molecules are now low energy molecules and they are recycled back into the light stage. That is what we need to know. And what we're gonna answer now is a few questions and get you massively confident and show you that once you study in a manner for exam questions, there's actually not a massive amount you need to know. And the simpler you keep it, the easier it is to retain and therefore the easier it is gonna to be to, to perform in the day of an exam.